Canada has had a long history when it comes to baseball. And I could go through the whole history of Canadian baseball, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to look at Tecumseh Park in London, Ontario, the oldest continually used baseball park in the world. It has a fascinating history beginning in 1877, and I'm going to be covering the history from 1877 to 1936, looking at the park and the teams that played there. So let's dive on into the history of Tecumseh Park in London, Ontario. In 1868, the London Tecumsehs, named for the famous indigenous leader who fought for the British during the War of 1812, were founded, and that would lead to the eventual creation of Tecumseh Park in 1877. The park was built by W.J. Reed, and Jacob Engelhart, an oil tycoon, would move the team to the park in 1877. On May 3rd of that year, the first game would be held at the park between the London Atlantics, the local junior team, and the London Tecumsehs. The Tecumsehs won the game easily 5-1. In an article published in the London Advertiser the next day, it was stated, The first regular game of baseball of the season was played yesterday afternoon in the presence of fully a thousand people. The new grounds are the most complete of every respect of any kind in Canada, and but a few American cities have a convenient playing field. The day that article came out, the first international baseball game would be played at the park when the Hartfords of Brooklyn played the Tecumsehs, losing 6-2. Three weeks later, on May 24th, over 8,000 fans came to the park to watch the Boston Red Stockings, who were the champions of the National Association of Professional Baseball Players, in a game against the Tecumsehs. This day would also be the first time the park would see a legendary baseball player on the field. In this case, it was the Tecumseh's Fred Goldsmith, the man who may have invented the curveball, along with other players like Phil Powers and Joel Hornung. In 1877, thanks to the park and the skill of the team, the Tecumseh's began to play in the International Association, finishing at the top of the standings with 14 wins, 4 losses, and 2 ties. A year later, the team was offered membership in the National League, but declined and the team folded on August 22, 1878. The park continued to be used though, and was there waiting for the team in 1888 when the team returned to playing on the field. One player on that team was Patsy Donovan, who would go on to play in the Major Leagues from 1890 to 1907. In 1883, the park was damaged by a huge flood on the Thames River on July 11th that destroyed the original grandstands. In 1892, the park was used for professional bicycle races, attracting even a man by the name of Harley Davidson to come out. In 1895, the park was the first place in London to show a motion picture, which was organized by the London Bicycle Club. Earl Neal would play for the team from 1912 to 1915, before going on to play for the Cincinnati Reds in 1916, and then on to a football career that would see him inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1967. The Tecumsehs of the 1920s would be one of the best teams in North America, delighting fans who came to watch the team at the park. Charlie Geringer would play at the park for the Tecumsehs from 1921 to 1924, prior to beginning his Hall of Fame career with the Detroit Tigers. The team at this time was one of the best on the continent, and in a ranking of the greatest minor league baseball teams of all time, baseball historians put the 1920 London Tecumsehs at number 52, thanks to their record of 86 wins and only 32 losses. The same year that that team was lighting up their league, baseball legend Ty Cobb would come to the park with the Detroit Tigers to play the Tecumsehs at the park on September 15th. The Tigers defeated the Tecumsehs 5-4 in front of 3,000 people. That 1920 club was so good they captured their first place pennant with 15 games to play and led the league in attendance when 100,686 people came into the park to see them play. On May 9, 1921, the Pittsburgh Pirates came to Tecumseh Park to play the Tecumsehs, defeating them 8-7 in front of 3,500 people. On hand for the game was George Gibson, the manager of the Pirates. Gibson was born in London, Ontario, and would play 13 years for the Pittsburgh Pirates and the New York Giants. He was considered one of the best catchers in the league during his playing days, and would win the World Series championship in 1909. Gibson had a long history with the park, 
having played there as a young man before going on to the major leagues. After he won the World Series, he returned to the park where 5,000 people were cheering for him. And Gibson was named Canada's baseball player of the half century. And at that game on May 9th, he would catch the opening inning with his 1909 World Series winning teammate, Babe Adams. On September 14th, 1921, 1,000 people came to the park to see the team win the Michigan-Ontario Baseball League Championship 1-0. Two weeks later, that team won another championship series, a best-of-seven series against the Ludington, Michigan team. Another baseball legend would come to the park on May 23rd, 1923, when Walter Johnson, regarded as one of the greatest pitchers ever, was at the park when the Washington Senators defeated the Tecumsehs 13-9 in an exhibition game. In 1932, a huge celebration was held at the park for silent Sandy Somerville, who was the first Canadian golfer to win a U.S. amateur title. In 1936, George Gibson convinced his neighbor, John Labatt, to buy the park, refurbish it, and donate it to the city. From that point forward, it would be known as Labatt Park. Since 1925, the London Majors have called the park home longer than most Major League teams have been in their ballparks. In 1994, the park received historic designation under the Ontario Heritage Act, and on September 8, 2008, it became a recognized Canadian historic place. So that was just a quick look at a really interesting history of a park in London, Ontario. I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, please give a like and share it if you really, really like it. You can also reach me at craig at canadaehx.com, and you can find hundreds of articles on my website at canadaehx.com, and of course you can listen to my podcast where I put out three episodes a week. Just search for Canadian History X. Remember, that's E-H-X. And you can support everything through Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash canadaehx.